back to another review, me Kevin from Kevin Grant on Whiskey. I've got the merch back on again because it's cold, it's snowing today here in Scotland so I've got my hoodie on and my hacks. I've not done my hair. So what we've got this week is another re-review. It's one that I'd done, I don't know if it was maybe last year or two years ago but I was having a look at the collection and seeing what was in there and I found the Ben Rick. So it's a space side. This is a 10 year old part of the core range and it's a three cask matured which we'll get into. As you can see you've got about half a bottle left of it. I've been at it a couple of times that I find I go to this more in the summer but I've not had this for a good a good while. I don't really remember having much of it to the tail end of, of last year so it's going to be new again to me. So see what we can get from the previous video which was an uncorking. I bought it um, as I say last year or two years ago. This was bottled on the 23rd of June 2021 so it's been in the bottle for a while. As I say we're going to go to it. This is a bourbon, sherry oak and virgin oak um, married together. So 10 years uh, the casts have been more or less put together, blended together by Dr. Uh, Rachel Barry who's a new master blender there at Ben Reek, Glendronach and Glen Glasser. It's owned by Brent Foreman, so Brent Foreman we know is also Jack Daniels. <laughs> I have speculated and probably say is there going to be a lot of Jack Daniels influence in casks from these three distilleries for the bourbon side of it? I think so. But we're going to get into this, see how much has changed or how much I still enjoy it or if I would reach for it again. So as I say, it's been at the back of the cupboard with other ones as well that I've been able to look out. So I think it's quite good to change the collection around from time to time to not just keep reaching for the stuff at the front, but we can see what's at the back. So we'll get into this. As I say, 10 years old bourbon, sherry and virgin oak married together, but I don't know what the percentage is of how how long we've spent in each in each cask. It's quite light in colour, as we can see straight away. It's that kind of real bourbon influence for me. It's very, very light. And we'll get it on the nose. Maybe V is a 43%, so it's quite light. It's a kind of Glendronach style as well, around that 43%. So we'll get this on the nose, see what we can get. It's very, it's very light and kind of white fruit, more kind of yellow melon. A juicy, a kind of juicy melon style with like coconut as well. I think that's kind of bourbon cast coming through. That I see white grape, green grape, but it's got that sweetness there as well. That kind of the what like sugary water coming through on top of all that. Yeah, a lot, a lot of melon. Very summery. Very, very similar. I think that's why I maybe reach for this more in the summer than I do in the winter. It's lighter. It's quite, it's quite elegant on the nose. A little bit of like oak or toasted barley or something around around that realm as well. Maybe buttery toast. Something, something just, just in the backdrop there. After all the kind of the sweet, nice fruits come from the forefront. We'll get it on the palate, we'll see how we go, see if anything's changed there. So slide your phone. It stays light, lightly drying. More forefront of a kind of slighter to the coconut side of things there. As I say, it's got a slightly drying right off the bat. A little bit oaky. But that kind of soft coconut coming through there, like the coconut shavings, like it's hard to it's hard to describe. It's not like if you're just eating coconut, it's not that full frontal, but it's just got that little hint. I think that's from the kind of bourbon notes that we you can pick up in this whiskey. So having the virgin oak finish, which I think is maybe given the buttery toast kind of note to it, which I get from the Bladnock uh, Leora, which is a virgin oak finish. I've got a kind of that virgin oak buttery toast in there on the palate, but it's slightly drying. I think it's coming from the sherry.
needed that little fudge note as well, kind of gooey fudge coming through. This is good whiskey. This isn't amazing. This isn't jaw dropping. There might be a little reason why it's at the back of the, the cupboard there. It's not been something that's really grabbed me in. It's not really grabbed me in again, but I feel that this is an easy reach for summer drum. This has got all the kind of notes and all pointing the direction of being in the garden in the summer and it's hard to kind of drink heavier whiskies. 43%. This is nice and light as I say, getting a lot of white fruit flavours, your melons, your grapes. Um, soft sweetness is coming through as well, the kind of buttery notes. And then this little dry note at the end. It's just nice. It's not stopping me in my tracks. It's not amazing. Is it one that I would buy again from today's um, sampling of it? No. I'm glad I've got it, but it's just really, it's just really not grabbed me in to be an amazing whiskey. I think it's a good start to the night if you're having a dram uh, and you're maybe going to go for cash strength whiskies. This is maybe something along the lines you can go for just to get the palate excited a little bit for what's coming next. I think this is a core range product. It's easily obtainable. It's one maybe if you're looking for something a little bit easier sipping, if you're, if you're looking for that kind of simple lighter notes in a whiskey, the Ben Riet 10, I would say, is a one to go for. I think they do a smoky 10 as well. They do a smoky 12, the original 12. They've got loads of different ones. They just rebranded not so recently. And I think that's one of the big things that Brown Foreman are doing across the board. Just they've not touched Glendronach, which is good. But Glen Glass is revived and amazing. And their stuff's really good. And I think Ben Riet, they've done it first prior to Glen Glass have been revived. But for me, this is just good whiskey. This is okay. Not, not anything amazing. I bet there'll be people there a bit uh, different and this is an amazing thing in whiskey. You like some, you don't like others and other people might like the ones that you don't and vice versa. That's why I love whiskey. You find ones you like, you find ones you don't like, you find ones that are okay, you find ones you need to revisit. But again, once this goes down further, this could open up even more, it could become better. But we'll just need to wait and see, right? <clears throat> but what I'm going to go and do is I'm going to go and finish this dram because as I say it's freezing outside, it's cold. And this will heat me up and I'll maybe move on to something a wee bit cash strength after this. But again, everyone, thank you for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for all the comments and on all the shares, um, on all the socials and everything. It's it's amazing and everyone that's joined the um, Kevin on Whiskey progression, shall we call it, through the year. It's good to have you all here. So let's see how we get on with this for the rest of the night and then we'll see what we'll put out next week. I've just bought a whiskey in auction, so I'm thinking I might just open that and do another uh, uncorking of an older whiskey that I was able to get and you'll not believe the price that I paid so tune in next week for that but as always I've been Kevin from Kevin Grant Whiskey join me next week let's talk whiskey Thanks.